To gain admission to this club, it's necessary to appeal to the military. Pass certain tests, be made to exacting standards, and above all, fit the taxpayer's budget. For this is the military aircraft club, a club where few are chosen, for the strong and the brave win the day. After all, these craft are primarily required to win wars. The unfortunate ones that don't win are mostly tragic wrecks on the fields of conflict. Powered flight may not have been invented by the military, but it wasn't long after the first rudimentary aircraft took to the skies that various armed forces saw the advantages of including these craft in their arsenal. Today, the place to be for members of the Military Aircraft Club is an international air show where all the latest jet fighters and bombers are exhibited. In South Korea, two F-15K warplanes were proudly presented as the latest acquisition of the South Koreans who had signed up to be the first country to buy them. These are the first of 40 that South Korea had purchased from US company Boeing at an estimated cost of 4 billion US dollars. Boeing had adapted the specifications to match South Korea's regional concerns. The jets were equipped with the latest radar and infrared targeting equipment, as well as advanced electronic warfare computers. Add to the aircraft's usual armaments, Boeing added slammer missiles for use against ships at sea. Most capable multi-role fighter in the world today. Uh, the aircraft is capable of carrying a multitude of weapons. However, I'd like to just focus on the SLAM ER, which is a new weapon that we are integrating on the F-15 for the first time. At these club events, it's not only the latest and greatest that's on display, air shows are ideal venues for honoring veteran club members. The legendary Spitfire, with its distinctive wings and maneuverability, earned a special place in British history. Designed by R.J. Mitchell and his team in the 1930s, it was a landmark in aviation. It was the glamour aircraft, no doubt about it, but that's because, in a way, it, it was the, um, the best aircraft in many respects. The Hurricane um, adherents would say it was, the Hurricane was a steadier, better gun platform, possibly even more durable in combat. Um, the point, though, was that because the Spitfire was structurally more efficient and lighter, it had higher performance and it could engage enemy fighters at heights the Hurricane struggled to reach. Innovations such as retractable undercarriage and oxygen supply were part of what made this aircraft the ruler of the skies. It's a lovely plane and it was wonderful, especially after the flying Hurricane, which is slower. It was, uh, it was a great comfort fighting against ME-109F. In the US, the death-defying demonstration team, known as the Thunderbirds, has been thrilling airshow audiences since they were formed in the early jet age, way back in 1953. Now the precision flyers push their Lockheed Martin F-16 fighters to the limit for a contemporary audience. Viewers around the world are able to watch all the action of these airshows and the T-Birds up close and live through the latest technology in internet streaming on the web. How many times do you get a chance to come out and see an air show in the United States? Well now, hey, you don't even have to leave, uh, leave the comfort of your home. You can sit there and watch it on your computer. High-tech internet company Whiteblocks provides a platform for the Air Force to broadcast head-spinning cockpit video live to viewers anywhere on the internet.